everybody! So I'm going to be showing you how to make a planter mug. They've been pretty popular throughout the summer. We're going to start with just a white prepped cup. I have the edge pretty sanded pretty well as well, just for uh, everything to adhere really nicely. You're going to need spray paint. Um, I'm using paprika. You can also use the color cinnamon. It's a little bit lighter in the orange color. Um, my store was just all out of it, so I'm going to use the paprika instead of the cinnamon. You're going to need epoxy sculpt. This is very important. And then you're going to need your epoxy of choice and a decal as well. Um, you do want gloves when working with epoxy sculpt. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So our cup is prepped, so you do not have to do this on a white prepped cup. Um, it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna get my gloves on, and we're gonna start right away with the epoxy sculpt. So we're just gonna use equal parts. And I pretty much just eyeball mine. You can measure it exactly, it's totally up to you. I just kind of get pretty close to the same amounts. You only need a little bit, maybe like a little ball that size. And grab the same amount in my other hand. Just kind of eyeball it. I have similar amounts right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just start mixing it in our hands really well. You can always get more if you feel like you need more. Totally up to you. I don't like my planter mug to be super bulky. I am using a 16 ounce instead of a 20 ounce just because I like the size of it. Pick up everything as I go. You just mix it really well. The instructions they just say to Knead together for one to two minutes before sculpting. One thing that's really cool is you can even use a little bit of water to smooth it out once you're ready to really use it. I feel like a little kid again playing with model magic when I use this. So I kind of do mine a little bit differently. I know a lot of people roll them out and then they press it. I kind of like a little bit more of like a sculpted look as if it were like, um, like clay. So what I do is I take my little rope that I just rolled out and I kind of put it right around my cup. I go just under the edge. I don't want it to be right up against the edge. And I just kind of start forming it the way I want. It might take a minute to stick, but I promise you it sticks on. And I just kind of start forming it. I like mine to be a little bit more free form than um, super, super um, uniform. I just think it adds a little bit of a touch to it. Where I have a little bit heavier spots, I try and mold that over a little bit. You can see I have a spot here that doesn't have anything. And this stuff is very flexible, so you can keep moving it around wherever it's going to fit best for you. Like I said, I'm very like free form with mine. Some people are a little bit more exact with theirs. They will measure it, roll it out. Um, I'm just more of a let's get into it kind of person, so I just kind of go grab it and figure it out as I go just because that's just how I roll with these. I like to kind of try and press my edge down a little bit too so it's not like a sharp edge. Not that your epoxy scope will stay sharp at all. Um, it doesn't like 
you don't get any super hard, soft, or I mean sh uh, sharp surfaces. A little tongue twister there. I was trying to think of what I wanted to say. So I kind of press it down as I go. If you want to lay it down and roll it out, you can. For me, it was just a little too sticky to be able to do that. Um, I like this way better. I just like the more freeform look. You wanna kinda of steer clear of the top a little bit. Um, on my first one, I kinda of did it right up to the edge just because that I like it that far up, but this helps, helps make sure you get everything all nice and sealed in. I had to make sure I really sanded my first one really well to get it nice and um, sealed in. So this just kind of helps a little bit. So one thing is a lot of people might do this with clay, but what's really good about Poxy Sculpt is once it dries, you are good to spray paint over it. Um, you can't spray paint over clay, which is why I would recommend using Poxy Sculpt for this. And this is lighter. Um, spray paint actually breaks down clay over time. So although it works right away, it will start to break down your product. Um, with Poxy Sculpt, this is a different type of like modeling epoxy. So you don't really have to worry about that. You can spray paint it and it will work just fine. And it doesn't like absorb it. So you're not going to lose its color over time. So you can see I have mine pretty free form, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of water to put it exactly where to kind of smooth it out a little bit. It's not 100% smooth, so now I can just use water. But you can see even if I just rub it, it starts to smooth out a little bit. I'm going to grab a little bit of water and smooth it out. You only need a tiny bit, so I just have a little medicine cup with some water in it. I'm just going to dip my finger just lightly and start smoothing out my spots. You can get really smooth edges this way, it just works perfectly. I just work with a little bit at a time. I don't oversaturate my finger with the water. You'll just start seeing all the lines just smooth out. It's such a satisfying thing to do. What's nice is your um, edges don't have to be perfect either. Um, things will kind of round out once you epoxy as well, which is pretty cool. My edge on the other side is a little bit higher, so I'm just going to press this up just a little bit just to make sure it's kind of even. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it similar in heights. So I could even push this one down just a little bit. With the water, I can really get a good like smooth edge, which is really nice. Just makes it really easy to get the look you're going for. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once you start epoxying it, it's going to smooth out even more. This is just the way that I do it. Some people do it a little differently. Um, everybody has their own way, whatever works best for you. Now I just want to smooth out this bottom here a little bit. I like getting that little bit of a subtle, like, drop down. And what's nice is Poxy Sculpt can also be sanded down once it's dry. Um, so that's really helpful as well too if you kind of mess up a spot and you don't realize it's after it's dried. So that's a really nice bonus. So 
Okay, so here's the start of it. You can see it's not perfect, but you can also sand down a little bit once it dries. We are going to let this dry fully overnight, and then we'll move on to the next part. Easy peasy. So while we're waiting for our epoxy sculpt to dry, um, we are going to be using the Counterculture UV Resin, the Resin Light, um, and I use a car coaster. So I've had some extra car coaster molds and every, every time I have extra epoxy, I just throw it in there. Um, so I just take one of these and this is actually going to sit right on top of our lid. So what I always do is I pop this off and this will end up being able to sit on the lid. That way you can take off the topper so that you can wash the lid without any issues. So I'm gonna start with that. What I do is I put a magnet on each end of the lid. And that is going to get cured with the UV light. I'm actually going to put it on the car coaster mold first. So I just put them on the very edges. So I go through, I love my UV resin, so I use it all the time. You only need a little dot. So I'm going to put it on there. So it's going on the bottom of the car, car coaster. I actually turn my light on and I place it upside down. And I let it here on the light and I hold them as far over as possible because it helps with lining them up um, on the lid. So I'm just letting this cure and they dry pretty fast on there which is really awesome. I use a little bit of bigger magnets compared to some people and that's okay but now it's going to sit perfectly right on top of the lid. So when I glue these on, they're not gonna be interfering with the um, little stopper. So now what I like to do is I take a little bit more, just another small dab. I like to use my lid and just line it up right where it would sit and then i'm going to turn on my lamp again and this is going to start curing again once it gets the cure to where it sits in place that's when i turn it over and i let it sit on the um underside again this just helps to get them set in place. Now I can turn my lamp over. And this just sets the magnets in place so that my topper will be able to stay there. The topper can come off whenever it needs to for the cup to be washed. And I don't have to worry about getting the flowers all wet. Another option if you don't like using spray paint is you can use freedom red and pumpkin dispersion colors you can mix them to make the perfect planter color as well so we're just going to cure this i cured on both sides really well just so that we don't have any movement by accident so the magnets are nice and lined up i do use bigger magnets just because i couldn't really find any smaller magnets but it works perfectly for what I want them to. So now they just come off easily like that. I do recure them one more time before I move ahead. Just to be sure they're all in place. So I get my fake flowers just from Michaels. You can get them from wherever. 
I just get them in these little bundles and then I actually break them off. I just cut them off, break them off with whatever I have. I'm just gonna use these little clippers. I kind of decide what I want. I feel like a more of a blue and purple for this one would be really pretty. I have this really pretty large succulent piece. I like picking a large piece and then moving forward with filling in with little small pieces. So I think I'm going to go with this one today. I do have this really large one, but I don't really want to use that today. So what I do is I cut down pretty, pretty close to the um, edge. And this one's a thick one, so I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna press it pretty hard. Don't let it go flying like I just did. So I press it down because this is gonna get locked in with UV resin then. So you can see this just goes right back on in place without any interference from the magnets. It can come right off. Again, no issue with the magnets. So that's really cool. I do let these cure a little extra, like I said. Um, so now that we have our piece, we can go ahead and start layering our succulents. I like to go in with my biggest one first and then add in. Sometimes I like to go in with my little ones. That way this one sits up a little higher. It's all up to personal preference. You just wanna go bit by bit. That way it cures perfectly on to the piece. So I'm gonna start with my big flower. I'm just gonna put this directly over that so it starts to cure it. I'll kinda of press it to the sides. That way it reaches everything. Sometimes I will add more UV resin in as well, um, just to make sure it's really set in where it's at. The fake ice that is used for drinks, you could even use that to elevate some of your flowers if you'd like. Um, you can really personalize this however you want. There's really no right or wrong way to put these on, which is really cool. I just like to always make sure it's nice and cured before I add more on. And from here, you just keep adding more on. Um, I really like to make sure these are in place. I add extra UV resin wherever I can to make sure it's going to not move. This can be a little bit of the tedious part just because you really want to make sure it's secured in. But once you get it on and going, it's pretty, pretty good. I just add a little bit onto here and then place it where I want. And then I'm going to continue adding more. UV resin in, like I said, just to make sure it is getting all sealed where it needs to. You just wanna be careful pouring your UV resin in right next to your light, like I'm doing, just because you don't want it to cure while it's coming out of the bottle. But you also wanna make sure it's just curing perfectly. I think I am going to add one of these pieces in just for a little bit more depth. And a little pop of color. Push it right in there. Again, turn my lamp on. You can make these as decorative or as simple as you like them. I kind of like it with just those three pieces on. So I'm gonna keep mine pretty simple. You can keep adding more and adding less. All up to you, personal preference. I add one more piece in. I think I like it on its own.
Now you can see what it's going to look like on the top. So it's just gonna sit right on top of the cup, just like that. So it'll sit right on top of the cup when it's done. Just like that, pretty topper. Um, so now we just have to wait until tomorrow when the um, epoxy sculpt is fully dry and we will move forward with that. All we basically do from there is we sand if we wanna sand, we will color our cup, and then from there we will decal and epoxy. Um, so I'll see you for the next part. So we let our epoxy sculpt sit overnight until it was completely hard, you can hear it. So now I'm going to take my spray paint and go paint it. And then when we come back, we can let it dry, put a coat of fast set on it, decal it, and then we'll get a final coat with artist resin. So we have our cup all painted. Now if you're like me uh, and you get impatient with decaling and epoxy, you can actually decal right on your spray paint. You just want to make sure your spray paint is nice and dry. Here's the decal I'm going to put on mine. Nice and simple. Um, you just want to make sure you use a very light um, grip transfer paper if you're going to add your decal right on to the spray paint. So I have a very light transfer paper that I use. It is the Expressions Vinyl transfer tape. It's very light. It's almost like um, like cling wrap. It's super light. Um, so I'm just going to put that on there. And then I can epoxy my cup actually right away. Just make sure my spot is nice and dry. And it is. And you want to make sure your decal is nice and straight. And just lightly press it on there. You don't want to press too hard because you don't want to pull up any spray paint. You just want to be a little bit more gentle if you're doing it this way. I just am always very impatient when it comes to decaling and epoxy. So I just kind of take my time and do it this way. You still have to put the same amount of coats of epoxy on just to make sure you have everything nice and sealed in. Um, but this lets you get a, a top coat on so you can get some nice pictures before you put the final coat on. Just kind of speeds up the process a little bit. But again, you want to make sure you still put the same amount of coats of epoxy on. You can't just do one layer. You want to make sure you have a nice, good seal on your entire cup. So here I have it. And now we're going to get it on the turner with some fast set. So I have equal parts of part A and part B fast set here. And I put a little bit of ultra fine silver glitter into it. And now we're just going to glitter our cup. I like adding the sparkle of the ultra fine glitter. I think it just adds a nice little touch to the cup, but it's just a little bit different. I try not to go too heavy on my coats, especially when I have this top right here because I do not want it to um, trap bubbles. I find that sometimes on big curves like that, I get a little bit of extra bubbles. And so I just work in thinner coats when I work with cups like these to prevent that and it really works out pretty well. And I just epoxy it like I would any regular cup. So this will spin and then it will get its final coat with artist resin and then we will be finished. One thing I really like about epoxy sculpt and then um, epoxying this cup is that your little um, top here does not have to be perfect. 
and epoxy kind of evens it out and rounds it out a little bit more. Um, so I really enjoy that about it. It just kind of helps make your project a little bit more easier. I kind of like that mine's not as uniform just because it adds a little touch of handmade to it. And some people use make pots that are, they actually make flower pots. So when they do that, they're not perfectly symmetrical like ones that you'd buy that are mass produced. So I think that this really embodies that. And that's what I really do enjoy about it. And now we're gonna let it spin. Here's what it looks like all epoxied. The sparkle I'm obsessed with. And so I will come back to show you the final product. So our cup has finished spinning. And we have our final cup. Nice and sparkly. We can remove the topper for cleaning and then it just goes right back on. And there you have it.